Nika or NECA started life in 1996. But it took a few years for the company to grow and really establish themselves in the market. And it wasn't really until 2002 when they established their real toys line that they really started to bloom and garner an international reputation. The early licenses that Nika acquired to make action figures during this time was really focused on computer games and horror film franchises. But having achieved success with these lines, they began to explore acquiring new licenses and look at other kind of film properties to make action figures from. And over the years, they would start to assemble quite an impressive line of licenses and a range of action figures that seemed to cover a whole gamut of popular films and characters. And for a while, it seemed like they were unstoppable. They had Terminator, Rambo, Rocky, Planet of the Apes, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, and just on and on and on the list goes. But something seemed to happen once they acquired the Aliens and Predator licenses, and although they made absolutely tons and tons of figures in both these lines, and in particular the Predator was seemed unstoppable, and they're still making figures to this day, it seems like for a while they stopped looking to acquire new licenses, and they stopped exploring new figures to make. Instead, they still seemed to focus on what they were doing well, and produced more of that. But in recent years, they seem to have re-expanded their vision a little bit more. And we've seen them begin to grow their licenses again. We've seen Back to the Future and Defense of the Earth. And it feels like once more, anything is possible. And this is great news for collectors who have been supporting Nika for all these years. Because you've got a pretty healthy collection of figures by now. And the beauty is, having them all on the same 7-inch scale with the same amount of detail and articulation is really, really good for us. And this got me thinking about, well, what other licenses would I like them to acquire? What, what other figures would I like to see made to join my pretty ample collection of Nika figures? And that's what I'm going to talk through today. And this got me thinking about what other figures would I like them to make? What other licenses would I like them to acquire so that I have a consistent and in-scale line of figures that represent all my favourite films and franchises? Okay, so first up, I have Batman 89. Now, like a lot of people, I'm a huge fan of Tim Burton's Batman. And I was really excited a few years ago when they released this exclusive version of the Batman 1989 in the 7-inch scale. He was released exclusively as part of a deal celebrating the anniversary Blu-ray release. And the promise was that you couldn't get him any other way, and it was quite limited in numbers. But thankfully, on the aftermarket, suddenly we were able to find a few popping up on eBay. And to date, this is the only 7-inch scale version of this character, or this version of Batman, which is absolutely fantastic. And for me, what I would like to see here is an expansion of this line. I, he seems a little bit lonely by himself at the moment, so I'd really like to see him have the Jack Nicholson Joker. You know, I think that's a must, really. To have these two figures together would be absolutely fantastic. And again, this would mark something of a coup for Nika, since you know, no one else has done this yet. Now, I'm not sure if there's some tricky licensing issues around uh, the Tim Burton Batman films and being able to produce figures. I'm not quite sure what the terms of the license are, because they do seem very restrictive. And it, I do think it's odd that they've never expanded this line at all. And yet, we do have the Penguin and Catwoman in these quarter scale from NECA, and they look fantastic, particularly the Penguin, it just looks absolutely incredible. So the moulds exist, surely it would just be a case of shrinking these down, and I'm pretty sure there'd be a <laughs> healthy healthy market there, a lot of fans would love to get their hands on these. And if all we got was the Batman, Joker, Penguin, and Catwoman, then I think we'd have a pretty definitive set right there. Now I don't think we'd need to have any extra characters, but we could look at expanding it and having say the Christopher Walken character for example, and a few other ones, but you know, these these four alone would be pretty definitive, and I, I for one would definitely snap these up. And continuing the theme, I'd apply the same rationale to the Superman of 1978 or the Christopher Reeve Superman. Because, once again, we do have a 7-inch scale version of this Superman, which is fantastic, but he's very lonely. <laughs> um, they haven't made any other characters from his world, at least not in this scale. And just like Batman, I'd like to expand his world a little bit more. It would be great to have a General Zod. And in fact, it would be brilliant to have Non and Ursa as well, if we're really going to expand the line. How fantastic would this be? Of course, the major villain that we're going to need is Lex Luthor. And once again, I feel like if you have just these figures, then you've got a pretty good representation. I think we could probably go one better and include Lois Lane, of course. And I think there'd be an audience who would pick up any Superman 3 and Superman 4 figures. Although, of course, these films aren't as well regarded. They're still fun films and larger-than-life characters that would fill out this line very nicely. 
Once again, it's a mystery to me as to why we haven't seen this already. Since we have the Superman, why not just expand the line a little bit more? It makes me think perhaps there are some strange licensing issues preventing this, but I don't know what they would be, and I really hope that they could get over this and you know work out a deal, because I would love to snap up these figures. Now, the next one on my list might be a little bit more divisive, but I would really quite like to see a figure of the Shadow. For those who aren't aware, the Shadow is a pulp hero from the early 1930s, but the character has remained in the imagination for many, many years after this. He's appeared in comic books, radio serials, and he even had a big feature Hollywood film in the early 90s. And I have to say, I'm actually a big fan of this film. Now, I know it's another one that isn't probably very well regarded. However, it's something that I watched as a child and I was instantly taken with it. And it had a certain kind of magic to me and a, and a mysterious appeal, which it stayed with me. And given that NECA have acquired the license to Defenders of the Earth, which is a mixture of these different pulp heroes, such as Flash Gordon and the Phantom, I thought that the Shadow was another contender who could join this group. I think this would be something of a coup for NECA, since there isn't much competition. Obviously, they would be the only ones producing a figure of the Shadow. And I don't think you need to worry about expanding his whole world, but obviously just having the shadow would be great. Now for me, personally, I don't mind which version they go with, as I think it'd just be cool to have this character. But that said, if I had a preference, I would probably opt for the actual film version starring Alec Baldwin. And they actually did produce a range of figures to support this film back in the day, uh, which were kind of fun and cool. And I'd love to have a shadow figure based on this film from NECA. Okay, so a big one for me, I think, would be The Matrix. And it seems like the perfect time, given, of course, that we've got The Matrix Resurrections coming out soon, so there's going to be a lot of attention on this film series again. And there haven't been that many Matrix toys over the years. We did get a line from N2 Toys in the 6-inch scale way back at the film's the first film's release in 1999. And then McFarlane followed up to support the sequels a few years later with these highly detailed figures that we can see here but were very, very limited when it came to articulation. And these were more like mini statuettes, really. So I think it would be fantastic if Nick could get hold of this, because of course they'd have that attention to detail, but they would also have the strong points of articulation as well. So the best of both worlds. And I think they could do an absolutely fantastic range of figures based on these films. I think when we look at our main heroes, of course, we're going to want Neo, Trinity, Morpheus and Agent Smith as the villain. And there's a whole host of extra supporting characters that we could really develop in this line if it was successful. But these are certainly the core ones that I want to see and get hold of. And the cool thing is they definitely lend themselves to variants as well. We can go with their looks in the first film, but also their appearances in the sequels, Matrix Reloaded, Matrix Revolutions, and of course, Matrix Resurrections. I don't think there's ever been a better time to uh, to make some figures based on the Matrix and you know I for one huge Matrix fan and I would love to get hold of some highly detailed very poseable 7 inch scale action figures based on these films. Next up, I have Conan, and Conan is a character that's pretty much evergreen, really. He's always hanging around on the periphery. Again, he has very strong pulp origins, and he's hung in there all these years, and he's just as popular today as he was all those years ago. And he's had numerous different lives. He's existed in lots of different media. Of course, he's had those two big films with Arnold Schwarzenegger. They did a remake or reboot a few years ago with Jason Momoa. He's been in comics pretty much forever, starting with Marvel back in the 70s, and he's gone between different companies across the years, sometimes sitting at Marvel, sometimes sitting at Dark Horse, but he's always remained very popular. So I think NECA would have ample opportunity here to explore different versions of this character. They could explore doing a straight adaptation based on the films, they could look at doing a line based on the comic books, or just try and use their imagination and come up with something original based off the descriptions in the novels. Either way, I don't think they could go far wrong. This is a character that has seen life in plastic form before. McFarlane Toys had a similar approach where they based some of their figures in line on the films whilst others were more fantastical. But as so often was the case with McFarlane Toys back in the early 2000s, the detailing was fantastic and they made great statuettes but the articulation was pretty poor. So I do think that Conan is due a revisit and I think NECA could do him justice. Plus, the options for expanding his line is pretty much near endless. There's so many characters that they could introduce from so many different worlds and media that could make this line evergreen. So another franchise that I think has kind of been overlooked in terms of toys is Die Hard. And funnily enough, to date, NECA is the only company that has produced a 7-inch scale figure based on John McClane. This was in Real Toys' very early days, and at the time, detail was in and articulation was out. So this is pretty much a statuette with movable arms. 
But I for one would love to see an update to this figure, a nice ultimate version, with enhanced articulation and maybe, and maybe taking another look at that head sculpt as well. Now the figure they went with of course is based on the first film and this makes perfect sense, it is the most iconic in the franchise and that is what we all tend to think of when we think of John McClane, but he sports a couple of different looks so we could have a couple of variants here from across the years. I'm not sure if this is a line that you could really explore further than John McClane. He has a couple of villains, so Alan Rickman, of course, would be quite nice, uh, possibly Jeremy Irons, but overall, I don't know if they're well suited to action figure form, so I'm not sure if there'd be that high demand for his supporting characters, I suppose. Really, this is all about John McClane, and that's all I want. I just want that figure. Okay, another property a bit like Conan is Judge Dredd. This is a character that's had multiple iterations across the years, from comic books to multiple films. Again, this is a cult character, one that remains ever popular regardless of what medium he's in, and there's a surprising lack of merchandise to support him. So I do think there's a gap in the market here that could be exploited. Now, I do know that in the past, there have been a couple of six inch scale figures. We have that one from Legendary Heroes, there's the 112 Collective from Mezco, but as far as I know, nothing in the seven inch scale. And in terms of which version you go with, well, you could go based on the comic books, but I think both of those six inch scale ones did that already, so it might be wise to go for, say, one of the film interpretations. Now, there's two choices here. We could go with the Sylvester Stallone Judge Dredd film, or we could go with the Dredd film starring Carl Urban. Honestly, in any scenario, I don't mind what version they go with. They could pick a comic book, a film, or a computer game. I'm in. And once more, I think once they've decided which version they're going to go with, there's a whole line of figures they could explore here, because his support world is quite interesting. There's lots of colourful villains and heroes, and just supporting characters that are just very interesting that I think fans want to get their hands on. Another one a bit like Die Hard, and the fact that really it's all about the central hero, not so much the support and world, so it would be a line really contained to one, possibly two is Escape from New York slash Escape from LA. Snake Plissken, of course, is a cult favourite, and NECA have already produced a Snake Plissken figure in their 8-inch scale, which is pretty cool, and you can check out my review for that. But I'd really love one in the 7-inch scale, because I want to put him with my other figures of that scale, and I want to have him interact in that world, even if it is only in my <laughs> on my shelf and in my head. Obviously, there's two films to choose from here, two very distinctive different looks, and although the general feeling is that the first film, Escape from New York, is the better of the two, and the second one is something disappointing and not quite up to par, I still think he's got a really cool look in this, so I, I would definitely want both of these. In fact, I'd probably prefer Escape from L.A. Now, no one's ever really attempted expanding this line before. When McFarlane Toys did their versions, they only did Snake Plissken. And I said myself that, obviously, my preference is for this character. I'm not quite sure if any of the other characters are really strong enough to warrant me having them on my shelf. The one exception might be Lee Van Cleef, because, obviously, it's Lee Van Cleef, and he's really cool. Uh, so, uh, I wouldn't say no to having a figure of him. Now, another action hero that I think would lend itself very well to Necker's line would be Dirty Harry. Now, it's amazing to me that there haven't been any figures produced of Dirty Harry before, apart from this one six scale figure from Redmond Toys. And he's such an obvious contender. I mean, this is Clint Eastwood. Dirty Harry is one of his signature roles, if not his most iconic. And I think he would lend himself very nicely to a seven inch scale figure. And just like some of the other characters in this line, it's all about the hero, really. There's no one else from his world that I'd expect him to make. I don't think there's anyone I'd be desperate to get my hands on, really, from the other films. But I just want a Dirty Harry figure. And there's a couple of different looks you can have from across the years. I mean, they're all pretty much of a muchness. I think the only thing that changes is Clint's age, really. He's usually in a tweed jacket of some sort. And of course, he carries his magnum. But I definitely think you could get a variant out of this. I think you could have... Dirty Harry from the first film as a young man, and then you can maybe do one from the Deadpool as a much older man. I, for one, would snap both of these up, because, hey, who doesn't want a Clint Eastwood figure, <laughs> both in his prime and his later years? I'm only surprised that no one's thought to do this sooner. Surely this, this figure would sell. Now, possibly one of the problems with these lone heroes, where the hero is bigger than the franchise or the villains or the supporting characters, is that to, the money to acquire the license versus the money they're going to make off it. So I suppose the, the figure, if they're only going to be able to produce one or two figures, is it going to be worth the, the money they're putting down for a license? Now, obviously, that's all information that I, I don't have access to, and I wouldn't know what's in budget and what would be profitable. I'm assuming that's why it hasn't been done before with some of these characters, but... Oh man, I really wish they would. Uh, it'd be fantastic to do a line of just, just cinematic heroes, you know? We could have 
Clint Eastwood, we could have Bruce Willis, we could have Kurt Russell. I think it'd be fantastic. Right, so this list is getting pretty lengthy now. So I'm going to draw it to a close because this list could go on and on and on. I've got loads of characters here that I've just had to tick off my list. But I think my my number one, my favourite choice that I wish NECA could get their hands on this licence would be James Bond. Obviously, I don't need to tell you that James Bond's appeal is global. That the film franchise alone has been going for 60 years next year. And that's before we look at all the books, the comic strips, radio adaptations and even TV pilots that have gone on in between. Certainly, he's had his ups and downs, but it feels to me that James Bond is one of those evergreen characters that appeals to multiple generations. And what's great is that there's been so many interpretations of this character, and tonally, lots of different changes, even within the film series. So it feels to me that there's something for everyone, and there's so many things you can draw upon to make a toy line like this super successful. And the character, of course, is larger than life, and it is his, his whole world is populated by larger than life supporting characters as well. Now, I think the smart money would, of course, be to make figures based on the film series, since that is what most people are familiar with. And with 25 films, and six actors to choose from, there's a whole world to explore with a toy line. If it were me, I'd probably adopt the Sideshow Collectibles model from way back in the early 2000s, where they produced one six scale figures based on one or two key films from each actor's run. And they'd usually complement this with a villain from the film and a Bond girl. I think for their initial wave, I think it'd be really cool if NECA got this license, if they could do a series of two packs based on one film from each Bond. Pick a distinctive but different look for each Bond so don't have them all in the same tuxedo and maybe go with one of the most iconic villains to support the run. And then if the line is successful, you could then do a follow-up wave which basically has a, the same Bond but in a different outfit so it's a, maybe even a different sculpt so you've got a legitimate variant and of course it'd be based from a different film with a different villain. And then from there, we could introduce some of the wider characters, introduce Q and some of the other members from MI6, and so on and so forth. And I think a good starting place for your first wave might be the Connery Bond with Oddjob. I would probably say that Oddjob is the most iconic villain from Connery's run as Bond, and Goldfinger is a much beloved film amongst fans, so it seems like a good choice to start off with. I'd also choose the three-piece silver suit for Bond, I think that would be a really good look and it would distinguish him from other figures in this line. We could then follow up, of course, with George Lazenby. Now, he only had the one film, so, yeah, naturally, he's going to be packed with Blofeld. And I think it'd be cool to have Blofeld in his Nero suit and Lazenby in his outfit here with a kilt. Now, it probably sounds a bit strange for a figure, but I do think it's a very distinctive look and one that's never been approached before in toy form, so I think it'd be really cool and distinctive. I'd then look at the spy who loved me for Roger Moore. I take his outfit here in his sort of his naval commander uniform and put him next to Jaws. Again, it's distinctive and it's iconic. Dalton is a little trickier, but I think out of his two films, I'd probably plumb for License to Kill and I'd put him with Fran Sanchez. Again, to make this a little bit different from what we've seen in other figure lines, so I'm thinking primarily, of course, of the Sideshow Collectibles line, we could have Dalton in his blue suit with the open collar, and likewise Sanchez in his sandy coloured suit with the blue shirt. For Brosnan, I'd probably pick Goldeneye, as it does seem to be the best loved and most remembered of his run of Bond films. I'd opt to put Brosnan in his tuxedo, and Sean Bean, or Drellian, in his black shirt. And then finally, for Daniel Craig, I think probably Skyfall is his most iconic film of his run. Uh, my personal favourite would be Spectre though, so it's a bit of a toss up in my mind which one I'd go for first. For Skyfall, obviously you're going to put him with Silver, I think Silver in his white suit, and Daniel Craig in his dark grey suit. Alternatively, if I was going for Spectre, then I would put Daniel Craig in his blue suit and Blofeld in his Nero suit. In fact, what we could do with Blofeld is actually give him an extra head so we could have that scar at the end of the film that'd be really cool i think this would be a really successful line i'd love to have these figures a seven inch scale of bond figures from across the years wow yeah i'd be there <laughs> buy all of these 
but I'm guessing there's got to be something a little bit hinky uh, with the Bond license because there haven't really been that many toys across the years. Sure, there's been different attempts. A lot of them have been in the 1 6 or 12 inch scale. And across the years, of course, some have been more sophisticated than others. In the 90s, there was actually a couple of different attempts. We had Action Man do a line to celebrate the Bond legacy, although they only released four. And then there were these curious 6 inch figures from exclusive Premiere. They did a handful of these figures from across different films. And to be fair, they're not great sculpts, but they weren't bad figures for the time. But since then, nothing really, so I would love to finally have a line of figures that are highly detailed, fantastic articulation, strong likenesses, and yeah, get them on my shelf. In the 7 inch scale, have them interacting with other figures in this scale would be absolutely brilliant. And if you're looking at big screen heroes, they don't come bigger than Bond. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.